Did you know that the right lighting can make or break your game design? Let's discover how to master it in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, you'll learn essential tips and techniques for lighting in Unreal Engine 5, perfect for beginners looking to enhance their game development skills. Let's talk about lights in Unreal Engine 5. Now I want to delete all the lights in my scene. I need some darkness. Under light section, as you see, there are some light types. I'll pick the point light for now. Point light acts like any lamp in real life. It gives us some options. There is an important property named mobility. If it is static, it won't able to move automatically. If movable selected in playtime, we can move it. Stationary is we can say between static and movable. There is a pop-up when you hover on stationary. It says a stationary object can be changed in game, but not moved and enables cache lighting methods. When object is movable, it is totally dynamic. It can move, can be changed in game, and can cast shadows. Generally, mobility property is used for lights. If the light is movable, render time will be increased. If it is static, render will be faster. In this situation, we can bake our light. So what does baking mean? There's two ways of using lights. First is dynamic like flashlights and games. And all shadows and brightness are created dynamically. If you put a light in your scene that will not move in game, you should set it to static, like wall lamps or something like that. And you can bake that lights. So all the shadows and brightness around it will be baked. You CPU or graphics card will not be affected. I mean that shadow or brightness will be a texture. So. You should set everything as static as possible. It is the best. Take a look to point light. It has a glow light to all directions. It is static now. If you build lighting, it will be baked in its position and won't be dynamic. That is, while the player is playing the game, the Unreal Engine will not have to calculate the light and shadows in every frame. Let's dive into options of point light. In Details panel, we can change intensity. It illuminates the inside of the circle around the light, but it affects some outside the circle, as you see. We can also change the color. Attenuation radius is that circle's size, actually. Outside the circle, light has gone smoothly. That circle is the border of light. If your light can't reach the radius, you have to increase the intensity. And there is a source radius. That is the light source's size. That means it will emit this light from these yellow circles. We can change the source size from source length, you know, like fluorescent lamps, and temperature. You can set light's temperature from here, cold or hot. The values are in Kelvin. If we lower the value, it will be hot. If increased, it will be cold and bluish color. Default is 6,500 Kelvins, the neutral light. Effects world is an option that if you uncheck it, light will be gone. Nothing in this scene will not be affected by this light. It's like turning off the light. If you disable cast shadows, as you see, all shadows from this light will be gone. Indirect lighting intensity increases the brightness where light cannot reach directly. With this type of adjustment, you need to build the lights to see the final result. Next option is volumetric scattering intensity, but it's not working here because we need some fog for this option. We will take a look for it. And visibility. It can simply turn it on and off. Let's talk a little bit about the spotlight, which is often used as a flashlight in games. As you can see, the sports light has a cone. That is, it emits light in the form of a cone. Unlike point light, spotlight emits light from a single point. Therefore, it is the most suitable type of light for flashlights in games. For spotlight, we can adjust settings, such as color, intensity, attenuation radius, source radius, source length, temperature. When we change the attenuation radius, we change the cone shape. Here are a few more settings different from point light. For example, the inner cone angle. Here we can adjust the area where the light should be the most intense. We can affect world or not. We can cast shadows or not. In fact, the difference of the spotlight is that it emits light from a single source not in all directions. Let's see the effects of inner and outer cone angle properties. The closer the inner angle and outer angle are to each other, the sharper the light is. As you get further away, the lines of light soften. 
inner cone will have more light and gradually to the outer cone, it will goes off. Also, the further you want the light to emit, the more you need to increase the attenuation radius. Also, if you do not want to see these lines, just press the G key on your keyboard. Now it's time for the rect light. One of the differences from other lights in terms of its characteristics is its source. It provides beer lighting like in photo studios. As the name suggests, it emits light from a quadrangular area. It emits light from this rectangle shape. We can size this rectangle as we want. We can scale the light with source width and height. The most different feature here is that we can give the light source and texture. With this texture, you can determine the color and texture of the light. This light has barn door angle and barn door length properties. Let me show you how to use it. When we increase the barn door angle, it gets a little spotlight appearance. When we increase the barn door length, we get a light experience like a soft box used in studios. Now let's talk about skylight. Now let's add a skylight. Yeah, nothing happened. So what is a skylight? A skylight is not a sunlight. Every object around us is illuminated by a light source. Every object reflects that light. The sun illuminates the sky. It also needs a light source to illuminate the sky. Since there is no sun in our scene, we set the source type as SLS specified cube map. By adding an HDR map from this section, we can use it as a light source. If you look at the image, it doesn't look like anything, but it's actually a visual light source. Now let's look at the result. Yes, our dark scene is illuminated and in the shades of the HDRI image. Changing the position of the skylight won't make any difference because HDR AI images are 360 degree images. You can change the angle and intensity of the image from the details panel. The next feature is resolution. You can increase it up to the resolution allowed by the image. Now we come to the most important and most entertaining type of light. Directional light, also known as the sun. The arrow here shows the angle of the sun's fall. However, it would be pointless to use directional light alone. With sunlight, we'll need other elements. First, we need an atmosphere, right? This time, under visual effects, we select sky atmosphere. So we can see the sun now. Now we can adjust the position of the sun by changing the directional light rotation. Now let's add a skylight again and tick real-time capture. But I think the clouds are missing here. Let's add volumetric cloud under visual effects. Now it's time to add the missing piece, fog. Let's add exponential height fog under visual effects. If we look at the directional light properties, you can change the intensity. You can also change the color, angle, and temperature here. There's something else I want to show you. Volumetric fog in exponential height, fog properties. You can create light beams from here for your scene. There are dozens of features under each component. You can understand what they do and use them in your projects. If you're finding value in these videos, hit that subscribe button and drop a like if you love the content and ring the bell to stay updated. See you in the restaurant at the end of the universe.